Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and as the snow pours down outside my window the, the UK weather continues to be absolutely terrible we are going to we're going to turn our, our heads away from the dreadfulness that's happening outside and enjoy a new beautiful puzzle called I think it's Tulpenbluter I may be saying that wrong which I think means tulip uh, and this is a puzzle by Mixo. Uh, and Mixo is one of those geniuses that inhabits our Discord server. Uh, and I think everybody sort of knows Mixo is a genius. It's, it's like um, people like Codec or Totally Normal Cat. You, you just know you're dealing with a, a brain that's, that's at a higher level. Than, than brains really have any right to be. Um, and look, look at some of the comments on this one. I snipped them just now because they amused me. Um, everybody basically who solved this puzzle has said it's beautiful and awesome. Even people like Fistmafell um, saying that this is very, very cool. I think it was made as part of the Secret Santa uh, event for Wichtel, if I remember rightly. Um, or is that Wichtel? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Um, but anyway, it was it was made made as part of that. Lots of you have suggested that we have a crack at it on the channel. So this is going to be our fair for today, looking very pretty. Um, and indeed, a bit like a tulip. Um, so we'll do this in a moment. I don't have much, much fresh news for you today. Um, so I will just mention some of the things that are going on around the channel at the moment. We've got, uh, we appeared on number file, <laughs> which was... Uh, a huge honor a huge honor so do check that video out if you haven't had a look at it um, you get to see me uh, side on view doing a bit of fistmafell and talking about math guy underscore 12's incredible incredible puzzle from a few months back the difference of squares um, what else is going on well, loads of you are receiving your books at last which is fantastic um, the latest tweet that we, re we received Shay Ganarelli um, who's also got an O Bobbins cushion cover there and spiral bound versions of both books. So fantastic, Shay. I'm glad you got your, your delivery. Um, and then was there, there was something else I was going to mention as well. What was it? Oh yes, over on Patreon, we have got my solve of the Cogitos puzzle, which thousands of you have now had a look at um, and seem to be enjoying, even though the video is two and a half hours long. This is what the Cogito designed roller coaster Nurikabi. It is a proper roller coaster of madness. Um, but I know some of you really do seem to enjoy the, the mammoth solves. So that's over there right now. Um, we've had Totally Normal Cat, my solve of Totally Normal Cat's Broken Secrets over there for a while uh, as well. And if you'd like to see that on the main main channel, drop us a comment and we, we might try and do that. We're always a bit nervous about putting up the incredibly long videos because we think they must put off people. <laughs> but sometimes you surprise us. Um, and, and oh yes, other people have been recommending the Cogitos. There's another the Cogito puzzle. I want to say it's called Onion. Is that right? Anyway, we might try and have a go at that soon as well. I might try and try and do that for a main video, just to say thank you for the cogito for putting me through hell with <laughs> with roller coaster Nurikabi. Um, anyway, that's all. That's all the news I think there is. Over on Patreon, we've also got our monthly competition for January, running till the twentieth. All the fun of the fair. Do have a look at that. And in terms of birthdays, I don't have any any viewers birthdays today but i am going to say happy birthday to one of my oldest friends simon you've turned the big 5-0 today um i'm not sure if that should be congratulations or commiserations um but um i, I hope you're recovered soon and we can play golf um together as we have been doing since about the age of 12 maybe so that is quite quite a while quite a while um lots of memories there have I got any have I got any that I'm prepared to share in public I do remember once when we were about this would probably be when we were about 14 um, and Simon hit his ball into the woods which was a fairly common occurrence in those days he became a very very good golfer but anyway hit the ball it, oh, this was at Langley Park Golf Club he hit his ball into the trees and he went in there and sort of rummaged around for a while and then I heard him saying Sigh, I found a wasp's nest. And I thought, oh, that doesn't sound, I don't like wasps. I'm not going to go and look at that. 
And then sort of emerged Simon at full tilt from the trees, running as fast as he could. And it was like a cartoon, you know, in cartoons where there's a swarm of of bees or something tray chased there was a swarm of wasps like following him down the fairway as he ran away and that well there's nothing quite as funny as seeing your best friend fall off a roof as uh as oscar wilde i think once said um but that that did cause me much hilarity anyway i thought i'd share that with you happy birthday simon um now let's have a look at the rules of tulpen bluter by mixo they are as follows got normal sudoku rules applying so we've got to place the digits one to nine exactly once in each row column and box so that row's got to have the digits one to nine once each this column does and this box and every other box must as well uh remban digits along a thick magenta line form a consecutive sequence without repeats in any order so let's look at this line if this line had a one on it, let's say this was a one, we would then know because this line has to have a consecutive sequence on it, it would be, how many cells is that? Seven. It would be the digits one to seven in some order. Um, and if it had a nine on it, it would be the digits nine down to three in some order because it's got seven digits on it. So that's that's sort of how magenta lines work. Often our, we normally have, uh, what color do our, our, re, our, our Remban lines normally? Purple, I think. So we've got a subtly different shade today in order to accommodate, accommodate these two cell lines, which are German whisper lines. So digits along a thin green line must differ by at least five. So if this square was a one, this square would have to be at least six to make sure that it was at least five different from the number one. And that's how green lines work. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. I think this has got three stars out of five for difficulty, so hopefully not monstrous. Um, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, now actually counting the number of cells on that line has given me an idea. Are these all seven cell lines? That Yes, okay, they are. Right. Okay, so I think we can say something sort of generic then about all of these lines, can't we? And that, and the, the reason, um, the reason this has come into my head is because of the nature of of German whispers lines. So there is a, um, there's a secret about German whispers lines that I will share with you. In fact, there are there are two or three secrets, but there's one in particular I want to focus on today. One of the secrets, which is the trivial one, is that you can never put a five on a German whisper line because the, the next digit would be impossible. This would have to be at least five different from five. And if you go up, you would get to 10 or higher. And if you go down, you get to zero or lower and they are not Sudoku digits. So no fives on lines. And that allows us to sort of categorize any digit along a German whisper line as either below five or above five. But the thing to realize is that whatever this one is, this one will be its opposite. So if this was above five, let's think about what this one could be. Could it be six, seven, eight or nine? Well, clearly not, because none of these digits is at least five away from this one. So in fact, this would have to be from the other side. Now, in the context of a seven cell sequence, if this if this line was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because each of these little green lines has to have a digit that's higher than five on it, they would have to be six and seven. And then the other digits would have to be exactly, well, at least five different from six and seven. But the problem for six is it's monogamous in the sense it only has one partner. So the six would have to be opposite a one and the seven would therefore have to be opposite a two. Now, that definitely works for one through seven. So if any of these lines are one through seven, we would, we would definitely know, we'd know at least the choices that we could make for the two cell whispers. Now it feels to me like that must be the same for if you have a nine, yeah, it's the same for nine. Because if, if you've got nine on a line, because it's a seven cell line, it's the digits three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, and, and in that sequence, four, well, you'd, you had, you'd have to have two low digits, two digits lower than five on the whispers. They would have to be three and four. Four is monogamous. It can only partner nine on, on a whisper. 
So we'd have the 4 and 9 on the 2-cell slither, and then the 3 is going to have to go with the 8. Now, there's only one more choice, and that is that we have a line that doesn't have 1 or 9 on it. So it's got 2, 3, 4. Okay, this is going to be more difficult, isn't it? It's going to be 2, 3, 4. No. No, it's not. This is beautiful, actually. This is weird. I've not done anything in terms of pencil marking here, but I figure I, I think I've figured out quite a lot about the puzzle. Because let me show you. Uh, let's do two, three, four. Two, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the this is the third variety of line we could have. And the beautiful thing about this is that you couldn't put the four on the green line. Because if you did, you'd need 9 to accompany it, and 9 isn't available. So 4 isn't on a green line. Now, what about what about from the high digits? Could we put a 6 on the green line? No, because 1 isn't on this, this line either. So 6 can't go on the green line. So the high digits on the green line, or the two green lines that each, each of these 7-cell lines seems to have, the high digits are going to have to be 8 and 7, and the 7 has to have a digit that's 5 away from it, which can only be 2. So if this if this was a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 line, you'd have to have 2 and 7 on it, which wouldn't be in that order because of the given 7, and you'd have to have 3 and 8 on it, and then the other digits would be the balancing digits, which would be 4, 5, and 6 in some order. So... So that is absolutely beautiful. So armed with this knowledge, how do we solve the puzzle? That's the next question. That's taken me a few minutes to think through. So, so, the, so the digits that are Uh, let me think. We know all of the lines have to have all of the digits, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 on them, don't they? Because any 7-cell sequence, if we, if, we think, if we imagine the digits 1 to 9 lined up in front of us, and we slice a 7-cell consecutive sequence, wherever we cut the slice, we're always going to have three, four, five, six, and seven within within the boundary. So seven on this line and this line must appear. So seven on this line is in one of those squares, and seven on this line is in one of these squares. Right. Okay, so that gets me a digit. That gets me a digit because of the principles that we've already learned about. What we learned is that wherever, wherever we found a 7 on a green line in this puzzle, its partner was always a 2, because it always had to have that 5-cell stretch between it and its partner. Because it's sort of, you know, it, it's the way these lines work in this puzzle. Now, if we put the 7 on, on this line, it can't have a 2 on it because of this given 2. So that's a 7. One of these is a 7. Now if that's a 7, we know that would be a 2. That doesn't look impossible. Um, but, but now... Yeah. <laughs> now we know the nature of the line, don't we? Because we know that this line now has a 7 on it. and But it has a 7 as a digit that's not, whis that's not whisperable. Now in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sequence, and in the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sequence, the 7 has to be on the whisper. Because you need, we, we need the 7 to accompany the low digits. So on this one, if 7 is not needed to be on the whisper, this one must have 3, 4, 8, and 9 in on the whisper. And these two squares are 5, 6 pair. This is so clever. 
is really fascinating actually. So just by adding two cell whispers to a seven length Ren ban, Mixo has worked out that it, it's causing magic to happen. Um, okay. So in this box then, one and two have to be in these squares just by Sudoku. I don't know if I can do anything with that. And oh right hang on hang on hang on well now I'm going to go back to my first the first secret of whispers which is you can't put five on a whisper line anywhere in this puzzle yet every seven cell sequence must have a five on it mustn't it so that where is the five on this sequence well it's there okay where is the five on this? Okay, we're going to get the fives. The fives just, oh, beautiful. This five gives me that five. Oh, this is lovely. It's absolutely lovely. Now, what does that do? Well, actually, I think I'm slowly internalizing the, the principles of this. What are those two digits now? And I want to say they're a three, four pair. Because in any of the, yeah, in any of the sequences, because, because we need the extreme digits within that sequence to always fit the whisper, you know, if we had one to seven, if one to seven um, was was on this whisper line. In fact, one of those is definitely a seven, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, because there must be a set. I'm just, sorry, I'm just changing changing my th sort of thought process here. Seven we know is on this whisper, and it's not in any of those squares. So it's in one of those squares. So that's not a seven. That would rule seven out of. Oh, in fact, if and if seven is on this whisper, then we know it accompanies two. So this is a two seven pair. that feels like it matters but I can't quite see why but let, let's come back to this line if it was the digits one to seven then we know that the digits that are on the whisper would be the six and the seven as the high digits with the one and the two and this this sequence would be three four five it would be the middle of that sequence wouldn't it so if this is two three four five six seven eight we need the two three the seven and the eight to be on the on the edges and the middle digits then would be four, five, six. Now they can't be four, five, six here because the six isn't available. And similarly, if this was nine, eight, seven, six, five, three, we know that we need the three and the four to be opposite the eight and the nine in the wings. So in fact, because these two digits can't be six or five and or seven, they have to be three and four. And that means that the, the wing digits here are one and six and two and seven. And we know where the sevens go. So this seven is so powerful. It really is so powerful. Right now, here is a nice question. Where does that digit go in column one? It can't repeat on its own whisper. So it's not in those and it's not in its own box. So it goes up there somewhere. So if this was a one, you couldn't put a one in column one. So that's a six. <laughs> that's a one. No, I thought I'd spotted something, but one of these is now a six. I do well. I'm going to sort of do the same thing again with this digit. Where is that digit in column one? And again, it can't repeat on its whisper or in its box, so it's down here somewhere, which means it's a low three or four. It's not an eight or a nine. And if that's not an eight or a nine, that is an eight or a nine because it's got to be whispered and be five different from this digit. I love this. This is really remarkably beautiful. And that is the correct word for this. It's, 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 well, elegant would be another way of describing it. It's elegant and beautiful. Okay. 
but we haven't actually succeeded yet, have we? In We don't know exactly what the composition of this one is, I don't think. I want to say... Um, How do we do this? I'm unsure. It was going so well. <laughs> I, I, I know that's not a one. Because we know if one is on this Renban, it accompanies a six from all the logic we've done. So I do know that's not a one. I don't think it can be a two either for that exact same reason. We know that, we know that any two on a whisper or on, on a Renban, always gets hypothecated to the whisper squares and always accompanies seven. So that is not a two either. So the one and the two are in a very small slither of cells. Oh, hang on. So what is this digit then? It's got to be a middly digit because it's not whispered on the central, on the central Renban. So that is a three or a four, which, hmm, because it can't be five, six or seven by Sudoku. So that's three or four, which is interesting because now we know that this central whisper line, no, the central Renban line is not the 987 line, is it? Because if it was 9876543, we know the three and the four would be hypothecated to the whispers. So this line is definitely either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in which case these would be one, six and two, seven, or it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in which case these are two, seven and three, eight. So we know for sure that one of these whispers is two, seven. Ew. <laughs> is that is that helpful? Probably it is, but I can't immediately see why. Um, we might, I know it's a horrible thought here, but we might have to resort to some Sudoku in a moment. Let me think. Maybe, or maybe the way to do it is to run that same logic on this one. Is that, is that right? The middly digits on this Renban i.e. The, the digits that are not in the whisper, cannot be a 3-4 pair. Because if this was a 3-4 pair, this square would break. And therefore, this, wisp, this Renban is not a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Renban. So it does have... Oh, I see it. So it's got an 8 on it. So is it this given digit? So 8 is now in one of these three squares. Ah, OK, I can see one thing that, that falls out of this. So because I've worked out this Renban has an 8 on it, I can see this is not the 8. Because if this was an 8, you couldn't put 8 in, in row 9. Because it can't go in its box, it can't go on its Renban, and it doesn't seem to be able to go in any of those squares. So that is not an 8. So 8 is in one of these two cells. Oh, but also, hang on, hang on, let's let's revisit the logic that we've learned. Also, we learned that whenever 8 is on a Renban, it's always in the wings. Oh, this is beautiful. So the fact, all right, so let's go through, I just want to step through this logic again, because I think, I think it's fascinating. So what we, what we worked out is this 3, 4 eliminates the middle digits here from being 3, 4, 5, which forces 8 to be on the Renban. Once 8 is on the Renban, whether it's 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, or 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 8 is always hypothecated to the green lines. So this is 8. Um, and that's 3, because we know that these are 5 apart. And now, oh, this is lovely. And now, oh, I'm going to, this is so beautiful. Now, now what? What's going on in the bottom row? Where is that digit? It's got to go there. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, 
Right, so what does that mean now? Um, well, we know one of these squares must be 4, don't we? Because it has to be a middly digit. Oh, no, is that wrong? Could that be the 4? No, maybe that could be 4, 9. Yeah, I'm not sure what I said then was correct. I think we need to, I need to think about that a bit harder. Um, we, yeah, because we know if this is a 9876543 Renban, this is 49, and this is 67, which would be quite useful here. Um, we do know one of these squares is a 6. And these are either a 6-7 pair, or if this was... Yeah, can this be 2-7, I suppose, is the question. Because if this was 2-7, this would have a 4 in it. Oh it's, no! Okay, so it's fine. We can, we can yeah. So it, 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 you have to, you have to keep using these digits in this in the way that we use them here. That digit has to find a home in the bottom row. And again, one way to think about the digit two and these ren bands is if the two is on the ren band, it's hypothecated to the green lines, and it's. So if this was, if this, if there was a two here, it ought to be there. And it's not. So this can't be 2. This has to be 7. That has to be 2. There is now a 7 down here along with a 6. So this is a 6-7 pair. And now the middly digits along this ren band are 5-6-7. So this is 4-9. And these squares are 1, 4 and 9 in the bottom row. Three is in one of these two cells by Sudoku. And can we go any further than this? Eight is in one of those two squares. That feels like it might do something. Five is in one of these. Oh, maybe I plot the fives around the grid because surely we can get a load of fives pencil mark. Yeah, we can do we can do a lot of five five pencil marking. Ah, another point is that there's a five on on the central ren band. That must be in one of two places now. Right, and oh, hang on. Okay. Oh yeah, we worked out one of these was two seven. Do we now know which one it is? Yes. Oh, this is good. Look, this seven does it. That can't be 2-7 now, so this is 2-7. I'm looking at it, expecting it to, to somehow... So this is either... This is either 3-8 or 1-6. Um, if it was 3-8... Then we'd have four, five, six here. That would be six. This would be five. If it was one, six, then we would have three, four, five in the middle. Ah, I'm not sure. Um, okay. Okay. All right. So, so I think we have to think harder again. We're going to have to do some more thoughts, aren't we? A terrifying thought indeed. Now, I'm sure it's going to be something to do with, well, doesn't that corner square now? Because that's off the green lines on a ren ban. So it has to be selected from three, four, five, six, seven. It has to be a middly digit. So that's a three or a four. And if that's a 3 or a 4, again, we can then apply the logic that says this line has not got 9 on it, because if it did have 9, the 3 and the 4 would be hypothecated to the edges. So this line does have 2 on it. Well, it has a, that means it's either the 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 line, or it's the 7, 6, 5, 3, 4, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 line. Either way, 2 is on an extremity and two can't be on this extremity so two is on this extremity 
which feels a bit weird with this 2-7 pair, but I mean, that's where the logic has taken me. I hope that's not wrong. It feels, well, okay, and now this digit has to find a home in column 9. And that's one of these squares, so that seems to say that's a 7, which means that's a 7, that's a 6, that's a 2, that's a 7, that's a 2. And, well, I mean, this can't be 9, because if it's 9, it's going to plonk 9 in column 9 here. And we know 9 can't go there, because then there's a 4 on this, on this Ren band somewhere, and the 4 would have to be on the green line because it's monogamous with nine and the nine would be hidden here and it, everything would go wrong so that's a four that's a nine one of these squares is now four um which which means nine is not on the ren ban oh but if that means nine is not on the ren ban because we know that we know that yeah, because then we would need the three and the four in the wings. It's really clever, this. It's really clever. So we now know, I think, because there's no nine on this, but there is a three or a four in the middle. Oh, hang on. Am I going? Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm going around in the circles here, actually, with my with my brain. I thought in my brain that I'd, con I'd concluded what I thought the nature of this is. I mean, this is definitely either 3, 8 or 1, 6, isn't it? Oh, it's not 1, oh no, it could be 1, 6. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely 3, 8 or 1, 6. But I don't think there's a completely fest a free festival of choices for this square, for example. Because this square has to fit in one of these. And therefore, it's either a 6 or a 3 or an 8. So it's not. It's definitely not a 1, which means that's definitely not a 6. Uh, is that helpful? Probably. Um, so next question. That can't be 8 by Sudoku. So this can't be 3. So this is now 6 or 8. Oh, yeah, okay, and it's not six, because if it was six, where do you put six in this box now? And the answer is nowhere at all, because that six takes care of those, that six takes care of those, and you can't repeat six on the line. That's beautiful. So this is eight, which means that's three. That's four in the corner this time, so we don't get double three in the corner. Um, and now we know this line needs a six on it, to be in order to form a consecutive sequence so let's finish that off three and four look at that digit so that's become eight or nine this must be the counterpart to that which is now a three or a four um, and from this we will deduce several things once my brain figures them out now what are those squares oh eight i must put eight in here now so these squares are a 1-9 pair by Sudoku. So 1 in this box has to go here. So 1 is in one of these three cells. These squares, oh, we don't know. We've got an 8-9 pair, actually. Oh, so that digit's got to go there. Does that matter? So these are... Oh, yeah, that's fine. So that's a 2. And this is a three or a four. Whoopsie, three or four, I think. And there's a three, four here and a three, four here. So this is a three or a four. Still don't quite know what it is. And there's a three, four here. So we've not, what have we not put in this row? Seven, I want to say. So that's a seven. Ah. Okay, so now it's not po Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say it's not possible to put seven on this line. I've already got a seven on this line. Um, is it possible for that to be three, eight? Well, it's not possible for the bottom one to be eight, actually, just simply using my given digit there. So this has got a little bit whittled down. Um, how do we do this then? What about this column, maybe? Two? Yes, okay, that's eight or nine by Sudoku. So a better question would have been, where does two go in the column? So can we get two? No. 
I was thinking we, we would be able to get two in box eight, but it doesn't seem to want to tell us the answer to that. Those two squares look like they're a one, three pair. And we've got, we have got a lot of sevens in the. Oh, we can get a seven in this box, which looks like it's going to give me a six using pencil marking. So that might be helpful. So these two squares are an eight, nine pair. Sorry, keep misclicking. So this is nine, this is eight. Eight goes there by Sudoku. So now I should know what these digits are. They're two, five, and six. And I know that this one is not two. But now I know what these two are. These are a three, four pair. And I do know the order, which is lovely. Although that doesn't really do anything, does it? This is a one, two pair. Which again, doesn't seem to do anything. Well, please, something do something. Um, oh, so close to forcing this to be an eight. I've got lots and lots of eights in the grid. And I thought that, that they were forcing that to be an eight, but I don't think they are. Oh, what, what is it then? It's got to be perfect. No, we're not talking fairground attraction. Oh, there's an eight there. So that's a nine. Is that going to do it? Oh, that's that's done it the wrong way. OK, so that's not an eight now. So that's not a three. So this has become a one six pair. And that's going to be huge because not only does it get rid of some options down here, but if this is a one six pair, the moment there's a one on the central Remban, we know it's nature. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sex tuplet, sept tuplet, or hep tuplet. So the middle digits are three, four, five. So these are from three, four, five, and that's not three, and that's not four. And somehow that's not resolved. That's rather worrying. I hope I haven't made a mistake there because that does that does seem to be what's what we've forced onto the middle line, doesn't it? And it doesn't seem to have resolved itself. Okay, what are those squares? One and nine. Oh, ah, keep, keep pressing the space bar the wrong number of times. Oh, sorry. Look, there's an eight here. Oh yes, the moment we know we got this because we know we've got to put four onto this remban. The four can't go next to the eight, can it? So that's going to do some damage. Um, that's a three now, that's a four, and that three is beautiful because that's going to chain its way along the Renban and finish some things for us. So that's no longer five. That's a six, just it has to be a six. And that two is now doing doing the work that it was in the grid to do. Um, that's a five by Sudoku. So these two squares must be known. They're a four, six pair, which we can do. So in this column, there's a one nine pair at the top and the bottom, and we've not put in a seven, which has to go here now. And in this box, we've not put in three, eight and nine. So that's going to be the eight. And this this is three and that's nine. Just using this three there, which does the one and the three on this side, which does the one and the six, which places one here in this box. So what have we got left here? Five and nine. We can do that. Uh, we can do five in this box. I think we're there, aren't we? Unless I've really made a ricket. I mean, the logic in this has been so gorgeous that I will be appalled with myself. Well, I mean, I could have got some Sudoku wrong. That's very possible. But it does seem to have just filled itself in. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> that was brilliant, Mixo. Absolutely brilliant. What a puzzle that is. What I loved about this it might be my favorite type of puzzle in a, in a way is a puzzle where at the very beginning you can do a little bit of thinking and really advance your understanding of how the puzzle works. So the whole conceit of this puzzle is 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 the high low nature of digits on a German whisper. And what that does within a seven cell sequence from Sudoku digits and how you must always, you're always pinching the extreme digits because they're necessary because of the way that the whisper has to interact. And then it, and then it's just a series of sort of deductions flowing from that. These digits were nice as well. The way that they sort of pinch so much of the column. So that digit had to go down there. This digit has to go up here. 
It's, it's a beautiful puzzle, and to do that in the shape of a tulip, I mean, I say this a lot, and I always change my opinion about this sort of thing, but that, if we ever do Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits, Book 3, Mixo, remind me that this needs to go in it, because it does. I mean, it's just, it's that good. That is a fantastic puzzle. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.